So let's go to the next demo, which is a first order differential equation, okay? And so this is the differential equation we'll be working with, dy over dt plus 5y is equal to 10, and the initial condition is 5. So you know how to do this easily in ODE 45. Let's try doing it in Simulink, just as a lot of information. So if you want to use the integrator block, right, so that, so, and I'll talk about in a bit about, there's also a derivative block in Simulink, but we usually prefer integrator blocks, and I'll talk about why. And so you need to restate this differential equation in integral form, which is just this, right? And so before we go ahead and make the model, this is sort of the, I want to go through the idea of the model. So here's my integrator, right? So start by looking just at the integrator. The integrator, the output of that should be y, right? Okay, so I take y and I multiply by minus five, which is this gain block which we'll be using. It's just multiplying it by minus five. So I have minus y and then I add 10 to it. So then I have 10 minus five y and then I send it into the integrator, okay? So I get my derivative. And then, so this is a little bit complicated, right? Or does this make, I mean, hopefully it'll makes, it makes sense, but it's a little bit sort of, you have to go around, you have to wrap your head around it to make sure you understand what's going on here. Yeah. Because this is y. What's going back is just y, right? Oh, okay. So I just want to output y, right? That's all happening. So I'm gonna repeat it once and then let's take questions about this because this is very important to understand. So start by looking just at the integrator block. The output of the integrator in this case should be y, right? And my differential equation, dy over dt, is just 10 minus 5y. So the input to the integrator should be dy over dt and the output should be y, right? I understand that much, right? So if the output's y, I have to multiply, it's 10 minus 5y, so I get minus 5y here, and then I do 10. So the minus 5y is coming, I multiply by a gain of 5, and then I modify the add block as I'll show to have a minus here, so it's minus 5 times y, and then I add a constant 10, so it's 10 minus 5y, which is getting inputted into the integrator, and then, so that's dy over dt getting integrated, and then you have y, and then I put a slope here. Does that make sense? Questions? The logic fairly clear at this point? So your question is, if it is, so what is y squared? So it was 5y squared, is that, is that what you're concerned about? So, so you could, um, there's also a multiply blo block, okay? So that's a very good question. I've never done it myself, but I can tell you how to do it. Um, so apart from the gain, there's also, let me just show you. So you see a product block? So what you'll do in that case is split that y wire and take the two inputs of the product as the two y's and then you can have, does that make sense? No, so your question is what if the differential equation was 10 minus 5 y squared, right? So what you'll do, start a new M file for this. Does everybody understand that question? Okay, so what you'll do in that case, in fact, why don't we simulate both, just you have time. We'll simulate both of them. So let's do 10 minus 5y and then we'll come back to that. Okay, so let's build the first 10 minus 5y model, okay? And so, okay, so the gain and the add blocks are in the math operations library and the constant block is in the sources library. Yeah, so, the, so I note that here too. So the add block by default is pluses. If you double click on it, you can change the list of signs. So that's what I did here. You could also use, in this case, a gain of minus five with the add block just by default, right? So I'm gonna just make this with you guys.
stuff. And the initial value, don't forget to change it, was five in this case. So just make sure that. Okay, so we're gonna run this. Get the scope. And so we start off with a value of five for y. And then you go 10 minus five y is equal to zero, gives you y is equal to two, which is my new steady state, right? Okay, so does that make sense so far? I sort of sped through that. I'll wait a little bit. How many people are getting this output? Okay. Get this output. Meanwhile, I'm gonna work on the No, no, it's, it's a little bit, I'm not gonna go too much into detail. I don't know myself too much. Yeah, so I'm not going to go too much into detail about this, but you can imagine that, um, so, so the integrator block has a step size thing built into it, and that's what it's showing you, basically. Very complicated algorithm to determine the step size. You can tinker with it if you don't. So the steady state would be, but okay, so what are our ways of diagnosing that what the output will be will be good? So the steady state should be 1.4, right? 10 minus 5y squared is equal to zero, so it'll be the square root of two, would be the steady state. So that will see the initial values keeping the same. So let's see, so let's do that right now. I just wanna make sure everybody's got this. I mean, but I use the, I didn't use the plus minus on the ad block, so. Yeah, it should be an exponential decaying to zero. But is your exponential going from zero to two? That's because the initial condition I changed it to five. So if you change the initial condition to five. Okay, I'm gonna, we can come back to this. I'm gonna meanwhile work on the y squared example. Ask me what's going on, what happened? Gordon, what happened? Oh, okay. How are you doing? So that's just whenever you, just like when you do OD45, you have to pass an initial condition, right? Similarly to Simulink, you'll also have to pass an initial condition that you get to by double clicking on the integrator block, and then you can change it. Five. Yeah. Yeah, then, then you get a DK. You get a DK? Yeah, good. So now this is going to the example that was brought up. And this is an important point here that Simulink can be used so when you can't use OD45 and your differential equations are really complicated, have tons of nonlinearities, stuff like that, Simulink can still be used. And in fact, in the way the PV loop model is set up, there's some nonlinearity in that. Okay, but going back to 10 minus five y squared as being dy dt, this is basically the setup, it's essentially the same except the output of the integrator goes into this product block where I have the same signal going twice into the product box. It's like taking a square, right? I'm sure there's some power block. You can take a look. I don't, I'm not familiar with it, but I'm sure there's some power block in this thing too. Powers of more than two. 
but you don't have to take a product, but this is you have 10 minus 5y squared. Does everybody see how that will go, that's going to fall out of here? One way for me to check whether it's doing the right thing is for me to look at, so in this case, the initial condition is still 0, and see it's going to somewhere around 1.4, so that makes sense, right? Output, I should change the initial condition. Okay. Does that answer your question, then? Yeah, in this case, right, because I just see how this big black dot is here. I just took the, both the inputs to product are the same thing. Okay? You could, there's probably a power block in there, too. So. 